Hi everyone, how you going? Welcome, hope you're having a fantastic day. And of course, hello to all the subscribers, non-subscribers, trolls, bots, and those lurkers alike. Welcome. Okay, just a few things about Australia. I've been looking into some of the weird things that go on out in the middle of nowhere. This is the Murray Man, okay? The Murray Man, or the Stuart's Giant, is a modern geoglyph created in 1998. It appears to be depict an indigenous Australian man hunting with a boomerang or a stick. It's a woomera that he's got, like, in his hand. It lies on a plateau at Flint Spring, 60 kilometres, 37 miles west of the township of Murray in central South Australia, approximately 12 kilometres northwest of Kalania. It's just outside... The 127,000 square kilometre Woomera prohibited area. And this is where they test weapons. They have a detention centre there. And, uh, yeah, some shady stuff goes on. The figure is 2.7 kilometres, 1.7 mile tall, with a perimeter of 28 kilometres, 17 miles, extending over the area of about 2.5 square kilometres, or 620 acres. Although it's one of the largest geoglyphs in the world, arguably second to the same alliance, its origins remain a mystery. Mm. With no one claiming responsibility for its creation. Yeah, there was a guy that did. He was an elderly guy. For its creation or any eyewitness having been found, notwithstanding the scale of the operation required to form the outline on the plateau for the description of Stuart's giant was used in anonymous faxes sent to the media as press releases in 1998 July in a reference to the explorer of John McDonald, McDowell Stewart. It was also discovered... Uh, fruturiously by a character pilot in an overflight on the 26th of June 1998. Shortly after the discovery, the site was closed by the South Australian government following legal action taken in late July by native title claimants. But fights over the site were not forbidden as native title fell under federal government jurisdiction, uh, which means native title, the Aboriginals, um, Technically, the state police and all that can't really arrest them or touch them. They're under a different uh, section of laws because they are sovereign people. It's really tricky to explain. But fights over the... Yeah, okay. So, where the Mary Man Geoglyph depicts a man holding either a woomera, a throwing stick once used to dispose for flocks of birds or a boomerang see plateau section below by December 1998 it had been noted that the outline matched the reverse of the Atmos and Zeus bronze raised from the bottom of the Adriatic Sea in 1928 it does look a lot similar doesn't it the lines outlining the figure were 20 to 30 centimeters 7 to 9 7.9 inches to 11.8 inches deep. At the time of the discovery, it was up to 35 metres, 115 feet wide. The image was gradually eroded through natural processes, but the pro because of the climate is extremely dry and barren in the region, the image was still visible in 2013. And it's been upgraded. It's done, like, fixed since then as well. While there is a layer of white chalk materially set in below the red soil, the figure is not defined to its depth. The creation of the Murray Man occurred between the 7th of May and 12th of June 98. By comparing the images collected on those dates from NASA's Landsat 5 satellite, the desert area where the Murray Man was found goes from undisturbed to the complete figure. See below. So, 27th of May, 12th of June 98. On August 2016, work was carried out to redefine the ge geoglyph using a grader assisted by GPS. The work resulted in an uh, outline clearly visible from the air, matching the original two decades after its creation. It was speculated that the work itself could not have been created without GPS technology then in its infancy. Trey Smith, a character pilot flying between Murray and Cooper Pedy in the remote north South Australia, spotted the figure from the air on the 26th of June 1998. The discovery of the geoglyph fascinated Australians due to its size and the mystery surrounding how it claimed to be there. Shane Anderson from the William Creek Hotel, located 200 kilometres, 120 miles northwest of the town of Murray, claimed the hotel had received anonymous facts describing the location of the artwork. Several anonymous press releases sent to the media and local businesses in July and August 98 led to the suggestion that the Mary Man was created by people from the United States. 
The release has said your state of South Australia, Queensland Barrier Reef, and mentioned Aborigines from the local Indigenous territories, terms not used by Australians. The press release also mentions the Great Serpent in Ohio, which is not well known outside of the US. It is also conjured that these features of the press releases may have been red herrings inserted to provide an illusion of American authorship. In July 1698, it was reported that a small glass jar had been found in a trough freshly drug at the site containing satellite photo of the Murray Man, together with a note bearing a US flag and references to Branch Davidians and Stuart's Giant. On January 1999, a fax sent to officials described the dedication plaque buried 5 metres, 16 feet south on the nose of the figure. A plaque bore an American flag, 3 centimetres, 1.2 inches long by 2 centimetres, 0.79 inches wide, with an imprint of the Olympic rings and bore the words, In honour of the land they once knew, his attainments in these pursuits are extraordinary and a consistent source of wonder and admiration which came from Headley H. Finson's 1946 book, The Red Centre. In his section describing the hunting of wallabies with throwing sticks and photographs of hunters with lion cloths and other details seen in the Murray Man, the book deals with hunters of the Pitantajara tribe, sorry for saying this wrong, suggest the creator a Bradis Goldberg, a Northern Territory artist who died in 2007, uh, two, and lived at Alice Springs, has been suggested as the creator of the work. Goldberg, who was known to be interested in creating a work visible from space, refused when questioned to either confirm or deny that he created the image. Others have suggested that the member of either the Australian Army or American soldiers stationed at Woomera were responsible. And... To me, I think it could be like one of those um, directional things, you know. They've got people flying over it to let them know that they're close to the area. Much of the public and media reaction to the discovery of the figure was positive. The advertiser, our late paper, South Australia, the state's only daily newspaper, called for the figure to be made permanent by excavating the outline down to the white chalk later. At the time of the discovery, the area was part of federal court lawsuits through the National Native Tribunal to determine the traditional owners. The area was claimed by both the Anabara people and the Derry Murtha, who had been in dispute for several years. The Derry Murtha publicly complained of harm and exploitation of the dream time. And if you haven't heard the dream story, time story, I'll do it next. It is a beautiful story. Calling for the image to be raised and for the artist to be prosecuted as natal title claimants, the Derry Murtha took legal action to stop charter flights and vehicles visiting the site, prompting the state government to close the area to the public shortly after discovery. The Annaburna replied through a solicitor that the area covered points of archaeological interest and that the artist could be prosecuted. May 2012, the federal court handed a native title to the Anbrabu people. Sorry for saying it wrong. The artwork was called Environmental Vandalism by former Environmental Minister Dorothy Klotz and graffiti by the South Australian Chief of Aboriginal Affairs David Ruthman. In June 2018, adventurer Dick Smith revealed that he had a team working on investigating the origins of the Murray Man for two years to no avail and was offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to the identity Entity of its creators. Mm -hmm. Go down to the local Mason Club, you'd find out. The Australian state government subsequently formally stated that they would not pursue any legal proceedings against the creators if identified. So thank you. Thank you for watching. Next video, I'll make a quick dream time one about it. Um, but yeah, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to or not, or hit the dislike button. I don't care. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Raise your vibrations. Much love. Bye now.